was still be alive. We also have um, sections on uh, components on adaptation to climate change. We have helped the system in the development on the Philippine National Framework Strategy of Climate Change Adaptation, the Philippine Strategy of Climate Change Adaptation, and the National Climate Change Action Plan in support of the, especially also in support of the Climate Change Commission. We have developed uh, models of climate proof languages and development plans that studied already and financed uh, quite a number of climate adaptation measures like man mangrove belt rehabilitation, scuba rise, improved management of marine protected areas, etc. And our last edition, our latest edition, is that we are getting engaged in the mitigation of climate change through uh, expanding on our red project and the red approach, reduce the emission from deforestation, degradation, and um, assisting the Department of, en Department of Energy in coming up with conclusive policies for expanding on renewable energies. So this is this gives you an overview about the sections we are in, GIZ is in, in the Philippines. And um, yeah, since I got decided I should close. Thank you very much for listening to this. The two frogs uh, are actually newly discovered species in southern Leyte. They were uh, un they got discovered just a few weeks ago. And uh, last week, last week we had the unveiling of these two species. I think if you read carefully the newspaper, you find articles about that plentiful. We counted about 30, 40 articles. In, in the Philippines, and it even went into the international press. In Germany, GPA, the German press agency, has picked on that. And since that time, uh, Philippines and our project and biodiversity conservation is all over written in the, in the big news. So thank you very much for listening. And before I close, please take it serious what I said, that we are open for more cooperation, closer cooperation. Um, we also intend to, um, together with the, the institutes, you know, to organize more field trips for journalists for specific issues. <laughs> and, and we hope, of course, that through that and through this cooperation, not only people are not informed, but as I said before, that policies are set up which are future-oriented and which help to accommodate the needs of the people in a healthy environment. Thank you very much. Maraming, maraming salamat, Mr. Salser. Your last slide shows is a cue up to date that we should stop our crab talk and proceed to the frogging. Okay. <laughs> and I think now that you have started your partnership with PPI and GIC, you would expect more dialogue will take up your channels and I'm sure there will be more dialogue and greater access to information on environment from GIC and other agencies. Now, we continue the discussion on the environment with a related topic we talk about biodiversity. A resource person is somebody who's known to many of us. He was indeed the publisher for eight years in Laguna, I recall. His newspaper used to be part of our awards. So he was with the News World Weekly, published for eight years in Laguna. And now he's with the uh, Salem Center for Biodiversity. He's head of the Communication and Public Affairs. Please welcome Mr. Roy Insio. Thank you very much, Mon. Good morning. Good morning. So, sabi ng mga bata, hindi pa loba. This morning, our first three speakers started with crabs. And Walter ended with crabs. Let me go back to the crabs. Uh, I have... Uh, uh, frog, uh, maybe crabs for me is unforgettable because I'm allergic to crabs. <laughs> Last month I stayed in the hospital for one day because I could not resist uh, 
with the, the steamed grass so I had just a bite and I ended up in the hospital. Anyway, um, my topic is reporting biodiversity. I will not teach you skills in reporting biodiversity because most of you have acquired the skills in reporting any topic under the sun. Neither will I talk about how media should report biodiversity. What I'm going to talk about is why newspapers should report about biodiversity. There is a crisis that does not attract media and public attention compared to hot issues such as climate change, the North Korea missile testing, the Scarborough show standoff, the Corona trial, Hindu's crimes, crime and corruption, or political or showbiz controversies. This forgotten crisis is called biodiversity loss. But some of you might be still in the dark and uh, wondering what biodiversity is. Biodiversity is a contraction of two words. Biological, referring to life, and diversity, meaning variety. Biodiversity is the variety of life on Earth, from the smallest microorganism to the biggest mammal or the biggest whale. Biodiversity is a way of life that includes the full range of ecosystems and the species that live in them. And you may be happy to know that Southeast Asia, which is also known as the ASEAN region, is a treasure trove of biodiversity. If the United States, France, Germany, um, Japan are considered economic superpowers, Southeast Asia, including the Middle East, is a biodiversity superpower. The region is only 3% of the total Earth's surface, but we are home to 18% of the known plant and animal and marine species. But biodiversity is beyond a collection of magnificent and wonderful species. We depend on biodiversity for our food, air and water, medicine, clothing, shelter, soil fertilization, air and water purification, protection from harsh weather conditions, and many more, and we call them ecosystem services. And within Southeast Asia alone, economists have valued the ecosystem services to be worth over 200 billion US dollars. So that's my boggling figure in versus, I don't know, I'm not good at uh, mathematics, that's why I look up journalism. And by the way, let me acknowledge uh, my mentor in journalism. Without her, I wouldn't be here. I learned journalism from her. Dr. Madhuri Suba, please rise. From the College of Development uh, Communication. As I mentioned earlier, the silent crisis that is not getting sufficient media and public attention is biodiversity loss. While we are a superpower in biodiversity, over 1,000 out of 65,000 known species of plants, animals, and marine life in Southeast Asia are endangered, including our Philippine eagle, the Visayan ring-filled hornbill, the Philippine tarantula, and the tamara, to name a few. But your question is, does it matter if we lose just one species? Let's take, for example, the bats. What will happen if we take away the bats from our environment? A female bat of reproductive age can consume her weight in insects each night, and that amounts to millions of pounds of insects each year. If the bats are wiped out, insect population would explode, including pests that can decimate agriculture yields and insects that spread diseases to humans. All of us are aware of the ongoing illegal trade on gecko or the hawk. So how many of you have heard the sound of the hawk? Or have not heard? Okay. What will happen if we take away the hawk from our environment? The hawk is mosquitoes, and without the hawk, the mosquito population will multiply, including those that carry malaria and dengue fever. So in short, any just one species you take away from an ecosystem will affect the balance of nature. 
And unfortunately, the world, including the Philippines, is losing its bite.